It's been six years since the very first Gears of War came out as an Xbox 360 exclusive title, and now on September 20th, 2011, Gears of War 3 has finally been released. This is the very first cutscene in the campaign which allows you to understand what happened in between games from Emergence Day in Gears of War 1 to the sinking of Jacinto in Gears of War 2. So please enjoy watching this before I start the video review. Chairman Prescott, he abandoned us some time ago. We can't pretend we're a government any longer. It all began on E-Day when the Locust emerged and overran us. We tried to stop them with the Hammer of Dawn, incinerating our own cities, killing millions of our own people. But the Locust kept coming. The survivors from the Hammer Strikes, the Stranded, didn't want anything to do with a government that sacrificed civilians. And after 15 years of fighting, we even had to sacrifice the last human stronghold, Jacinto. We sank the city and finally stopped the Locust Army. The war was finally over. Reduced to refugees, we found a remote island where we could start again. But some things could never be rebuilt. The broken heart, the broken mind. Then a new enemy came after us, even worse than the last, the Lambert. Now they're spreading across Sarah, killing everything in their path. We've held them off as long as we can. We're out of options. Our only hope now is to abandon the island and split up. Some of us are going to live on the remaining ships. Others want to risk going back to the mainland. Godspeed, Colonel. This is the former Lieutenant Anya Stroud, signing off. Now hear this. All hands prepare for leaving harbor. Gears of War 3 ends with a bang to the successful trilogy of epic games. On average, for single player, it will take you up to 7-8 to eight hours to complete on casual difficulty. Varied difficulties may take longer. But with the added 4 player co-op, with varied difficulties, it could take you easily up to 15-20 to 20 hours to complete on insane, legendary, or sometimes even casual. The cover system is back in Gears of War and probably better than ever, as Epic Games listen to you guys and fix all, most of their bugs in the cover system and the rolling system, and now adds omnidirectional speed. Unfortunately, some of the campaign is so hard that you have to play on some sort of variant of co-op. Four-player co-op is preferred, but that is your decision. Horde Mode 2.0 is very similar to the very first Horde Mode in Gears of War 2. With the added difficulty of the Lambents coming at you, on top of the Locust Horde, you'll be spending countless hours trying to reach the famous 50th wave. Five player co-op is supported in this game type, so have four other friends and have at it. Unfortunately, the high level waves get so intense that it's almost impossible to beat alone, so I would recommend either having a friend or two to help you out. If you're looking to get high scoring achievements, this game type is not for you. For beating Horde Mode 2.0 on Insane, you only get 10 gamer score. Don't get me wrong, this game type is still chock full of fun. Adding a horde mode was probably one of the smartest moves from Epic Games. If you're sick of the multiplayer, hop into this game mode for an hour or two and have all your stress gone due to the comedic lines of the characters. An added bonus to horde mode 2.0 is you can build barriers, decoys, and turrets to keep the horde at bay, on top of being able to buy weapons on the ground. To make Horde Mode 2.0 even more interesting and hard, Epic Games added in a new boss wave. After every 10 waves, harder and harder enemies from the campaign show up to ruin you and your team's chances of reaching wave 50. With enemies like Brumox, Corpsers, Lambent Berserkers, along with Boomers, Maulers, Flamers, and Grinders, on top of the regular Lambent and Locust Soldiers, boss waves are still very difficult. Don't get me wrong, it is fun to take down the bigger baddies from the campaign, but again, it's so difficult to do alone. Epic Games should have made it easier to do with it, do it solo if you already have five or more friends trying to attempt Horde Mode 2.0. The newly added Beast Mode is a nice touch for Gears of War 3. You won't believe how much fun it is to take out human bots as a tiny ticker or a towering butcher until you actually try it out for yourself. 
Unfortunately, unless you're on you're playing on the insane difficulty, this is really no challenge at all. It's more like a variant of a custom game from the previous game more than anything. It is so good for a few laughs as you whittle away the enemy's forces and make them feel helpless, but unfortunately, it is still not a very big selling point for the game. The statistics feature in this game is very well done. It allows you to see your kill-death ratio, your multiplayer level, your win-loss ratio, and, all, and every game type along with the ribbons you unlock through multiplayer. You'll be able to see what achievements you unlock through the game along with the medals. Medals are your insignia in multiplayer. When you kill someone, this medal will show up next to your name when they die. So obtain an awesome medal and brag to all the rest of the Gears of War players. All of the old game types are back along with some new ones. The multiplayer in this game has to be one of the most polished experiences I've ever witnessed. That feeling that your bullets are actually doing damage along with that satisfying gory crunch when you kill someone really adds to the experience. I've encountered very small lag issues within the servers, but that's about it. Small issues of the wrong character model being displayed when the name says otherwise is also a very small dent into the very well developed multiplayer experience. If you're new to the Gears of War series, I wouldn't suggest playing ranked or standard quite yet. Epic added in a new casual feature for new players to be on an equal playing field. My final score for this game would be a 9 out of 10. For the full review, please go check out GameSearch.com.